Good morning. Thursday, September 7th. Almost to the end of the week. <clears throat> Last time I'm going to be on here for a while. <clears throat> Planning on headed to the wilderness tomorrow. So we shall see how that goes. <clears throat> Don't know how long I'll be there. The tag goes through next Sunday. I'm not going to be gone that long. Um, <clears throat> I would think the latest I would be is uh, probably next Friday. Uh, come home on Friday. So, but so may not be on here at all next week. If I'm not on here at all next week, you know that the hunting is not going quite the way I wanted it to. <laughs> <clears throat> but we shall see. Um, never had a whole lot of good fortune here elk hunting. Um, I've shot several, uh, <clears throat> but um, yeah. <clears throat> anyway. But this tag is supposedly supposed to be a good unit where we should be able to get into elk. So we'll see how that goes. So <clears throat> um, trying to think if there was anything else, uh, not that I know of. Um, I find it amazing. I don't. I don't know if you guys saw. Uh, Liberty Safe Company. Uh, they um, have sold out to the liberals also. Uh, <clears throat> FBI wanted the code to get into a couple of guys' safes and they have some override code and they were happy to give it to the FBI. Uh, another woke company. Um, you know, say what we want about Apple and they're, you know, insanely liberal in so many areas, but um, <clears throat> they wouldn't uh, uh, give up <clears throat> access to get into, they wouldn't show the FBI how to access a phone um, several different times. I remember even with like the Boston bomber and boy, they caught a lot of heat for that, but uh you know, I'm glad that they respected the rights of people, even though that guy was a, a dingbat. <clears throat> but uh, people selling out. <clears throat> I don't know why either. Did you see uh, Bill Gates bought a bunch of shares of uh, Anheuser-Busch? I'm not sure what is going on with that. But uh, And then uh, the January 6th people, they're finally... Uh, prosecuting them. They brought them up out of the whole dungeon that they have underneath D.C. and <clears throat> are bringing them to trial. Um, they they uh, sentenced one guy 20 years and he wasn't even there that day. But I guess they're catching more of a, uh, a sentence on this January 6th uh, circus than uh, murderers are. So... <laughs> Sending a, <clears throat> sending a message to the peasants, aren't we? So, um, <clears throat> uh, Huntington Beach, I, I did read the news, as you can tell. Uh, Huntington Beach, California, right in the middle of Liberalville, <clears throat> have uh, stood up and said, we will not enforce vaccine and mask mandates. And so they are fighting uh, the corrupt governor of California and uh, <laughs> good for those guys, <clears throat> but it's definitely the pressure is coming to uh, mask up and vax up and, and uh, um, <clears throat> somebody reported, and you don't know what's true anymore. I mean, but CDC has, has been saying it supposedly that those who are vaccinated are, uh, uh, more susceptible to the new COVID strain that's out there. So I don't know. Who knows? Uh, I'm not injecting myself with uh, dead babies. Um, 
I am uh, not injecting myself with something that uh, Fauci says is safe. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll just keep living my life and uh, uh, trust the Lord, not tempting him, but trust him and, and trust uh, my immunity system. So, <clears throat> but I don't know that uh, crazy news. I'm glad that I'll be gone next week. Won't have to, you know, if the apocalypse comes, good luck, guys. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll just stay in the mountains. <laughs> uh, anyway, <clears throat> um, no, all is, uh, you, you know, I'm just thankful for what uh, God does for us, right? <laughs> and uh, today's uh, devotion <clears throat> kind of jumps all over the place. Uh, three different things. We we are going to look at restoration. We're going to look at the company we keep. And then we're also going to see the importance of being generous. And so uh, that's what we have. And one of the, the most powerful Psalms on restoration is in Psalm 51. And Psalm 51, uh, David wrote this after Nathan had... Uh, come to him and uh, told him that uh, his secret was out about he and Bathsheba and the murder of Uriah <clears throat> and all of that has been brought to light and uh, David writes Psalm 51 and we can sit here and be hard on David or we can actually learn from David and we can understand and realize that there are times when we make some really bad choices in our lives, too. And um, <clears throat> without God's grace, there go I. And so let, let's be careful before we have harsh judgment on, on someone and be the Monday morning quarterback, right? <clears throat> and it's also encouraging to know that uh, whatever has happened in our lives, that uh, God's... Uh, uh, restorative power is is uh, far greater than than anything, and and we can go to him and and find forgiveness and find restoration, and uh, we ought to do that. And he starts us off. He he says, "Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my tr transgressions." and reminding uh, himself and, and praising God for who he is. God is one that is full of loving kindness and, and he has a multitude of tender mercies. And aren't we glad for that? I mean, we, you know, just think about it. You're, you're walking along, you're walking in the spirit, you're having a great day. Uh, somebody says a crossword or I don't know, something happens, you get a phone call and all of a sudden you find out that your mind has gone somewhere where it shouldn't and your attitude has gone south and, and all of a sudden now you're not walking in the spirit at all. You're walking in the flesh and and you're like, you know, <clears throat> and we need to we need to understand the power of, of God's forgiveness and and uh, be quick to confess those things to God. And, and he goes on, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is before me. That, that word acknowledge is the very idea of confessing, okay? That's, you, you, you don't need to confess to anyone other than God uh, there, there is no man that has a closer walk with God or has more ability than you do as a child of God. You can go directly to God and confess those things to God. You acknowledge your transgressions and, and your sin is before me, as it says, against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. So, yeah, there are times when apology needs to be uh, given and and you need to seek that restoration. But first and foremost, it's a sin against God. And, and we need to realize the importance of getting it right with God and, and confessing it to him. And, and so that's ultimately who we are sinning against. And so against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity 
<clears throat> and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. And so in our heart, let us walk in truth. And so let's not hide things. Let's not try to deceive ourselves in thinking that, that we can, uh, <clears throat> you know, do something that, that, uh, that God's not going to see. God, God sees everything. And so we need to uh, be real with God and, and be truthful with God and, and uh, constantly be comparing ourselves to the word of God and, and getting things right in our lives, right? And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. <clears throat> and when we do that, then <clears throat> God starts working in our hearts and, and uh, uh, giving us a, a wisdom of God's word and an application of God's word that can help us with whatever it is. And Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. I mean, those, those are, those are the, the things that God wants from us. He wants us to be real with him and, and get things right with him. And, and, and he's full of loving kindness. And, and, uh, and, and here, you know, sometimes that's what we need to ask God. God, give, give me a clean heart and, and give me a right spirit. He, he says in verse 12, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uh, you, you ever, and, and uphold me with thy free spirit, but there have been times when that's what you need. I do. I mean, there are times when we, we just need to sit down and, and we need to, you know, confess things to God, get them right with God, be transparent with God and, and ask him to, to, to give me a clean heart and a, and a right spirit and to restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. You know, it's a battle. Every day is a battle. I mean, we, <clears throat> we're challenged by, I was talking about this last night at church. You know, we, we have, we have the, the devil who's always out there seeking to tempt us and destroy us. You have your, your flesh that gives you all kinds of problems. You have your eyes that wander. You have your pride that stands up against you. You have the culture of the world that is trying to drag you down. I, I mean, there, it is a battle and it's a battle every day. And, and you you have to do battle with these things. You can't just sit there and and <clears throat> think that that if you say that uh, you know I'm not combative, guys. I'm just sitting here minding my own business. It doesn't work that way, okay? And so you you need to get into the battle and and realize. But some days it it just gets wearing, doesn't it? And sometimes we need to be you know open with God and just confess things that are that we're battling with and maybe we're losing with and and just asking lord restore unto me the joy uh, of thy salvation and and help me to to get back on track and and <clears throat> then what does he show us he says then will i teach transgressors transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee deliver me from blood guiltiness o god now god of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. <clears throat> That's what God wants. And so... And it's just about being genuine. That, that's that's what God wants us to be with Him. Just just be genuine. Don't don't. I don't know. People, I think, sometimes walk around and and they think that God is like everybody else. That you can hide certain things and walk a certain way and and uh, you know be hypocritical and God doesn't see it. God sees everything. And. He wants us to have that, that broken spirit in that, look, God, <clears throat> left to myself, I'm a mess, and I don't want to be that way. I want to follow you, and, and, and I want to stay in the battle, and I want to 
uh, do what's right, and I want to do what's biblical, and so help me with my mind, help me with my flesh, help me with my eyes, help me with my pride, um, help me do battle against the devil, and, and help me to stand against this wicked culture. And uh, we do that together, and <clears throat> when, we, when we do fall, and we have a, a bad moment, a weak moment, a carnal moment, or whatever, then we, we confess it to God and, and have mercy upon me, O Lord, and, and according to thy loving kindness and the multitude of thy tender mercies, and wash me throughly from mine iniquity, cleanse me from my sin, and, and <clears throat> realize that it's against God and God only that you've sinned, and get it right with him. And, and, and that's the amazing thing. <clears throat> and it's the hardest thing I think it's the hardest thing for us to understand, comprehend, is that God forgives us and he restores us. <clears throat> I think the hardest thing about that is because we don't. We, we have a hard time forgiving other people for what they've done. We, we have a hard time forgetting those things that, that they've done. And, and we want to walk around in our anger and our bitterness and and waiting for the next shoe to fall, you know, or, and, and so we're <clears> that, <throat> and, but that's not God. That's not who he is at all. And in all of our weaknesses, then he still takes us, lifts us up and, and restores us and brings us back where we need to be. And so keep a close account of sin, confess it immediately, you know, get it right with God. And, and continue to do battle against those things that keep wearing you down, right? <clears throat> That's the restored the restorative power of God and and uh let him restore you. And and Psalm fifty one is a wonderful psalm about that. And uh many times we need to <clears throat> um go to that psalm and remember what God can do. I mean David had had committed some atrocities here. He had, not only did he con commit adultery with Bathsheba, but he had her husband killed. I mean, this guy, <clears throat> conspiracy to commit murder and, and and then committed murder and committed adultery. The little baby died. I, I mean, there were all kinds of things there and God forgave him. <clears throat> so don't think that whatever you've done, that God isn't going to forgive you. He absolutely will. And so let's uh, let's trust him and, and get things right with him. So that was the first thing. So thank you, Lord, for your restoration in our lives, right? Restoration. Secondly, be careful of the company you keep. It says this in verse 24 and 25 of Proverbs 22. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. If you want to run with someone that is just angry at everything and angry at everybody, angry at God, angry at the world, angry at his circumstances or her circumstances, and and constantly just complaining and criticizing and, and never happy, then guess what? It's going to hit you also, and, and it's going to affect you, and, and you're going to end up being the same way. So don't. Just stay away from, from those kinds of uh uh, companions and and yeah, sometimes it might be hard, and yes, sometimes it might be upsetting to <clears throat> the one you're separating from, but it's biblical. And so you, uh, and if they ask, tell them why. You're just angry. You're angry all the time, and and don't be angry all the time. And you see, that's what the devil's doing right now. I mean, he's trying to get us angry again. You know that this COVID junk such a lie and 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 now covid covid is real and many people have lost their lives because of it and 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 it wasn't it's not like the flu or something who knows now um this was man made and and it was intentional to kill people and and we know that and and these other strands it just makes no sense to me you know they they're telling me that it just what metamorphosize into something else and continues to do that. Sorry, right. they, they just continue to invent things and and uh, do that. And it can make you angry and it can make you where you're hostile towards everyone. And I got to watch it because 
the politicians are are lower than grasshopper spit with me. <laughs> <clears throat> but you can't walk around angry all the time. And we, we have so much to be thankful for. And we don't have enough time in this life to spend it all with angry people. And so stop being angry. We have lots to, to do here and and we have a lot of work to do for God while we're here, and none of it has to do with being angry. And so, and and I look my devotion. <clears throat> I get to say what I want, and these are my problems. All right. So every time I open myself up to you guys, you understand more about me in this. That yes, I fight anger, and and we need to we need to fight it every day. And and you're not it, you're not at peace when you're angry. And you're not thinking correctly when you're angry. And so you need to have a clear mind, a sober mind, and you need to have a calm heart and a calm spirit. Or otherwise, guess what? You end up sinning, and then you got to go back to Psalm 51 and seek restoration. <laughs> ah, anyway, <clears throat> so that's the second thing. Be careful of the company you keep, right? Thirdly, be generous. You know, we we have uh, uh, <clears throat> we we have so much in this country, and we as as Americans have so much, and and we are blessed, and some more than others. But I'm telling you, it always pays to be generous with what we have. Now, Second Corinthians chapter nine is where I'm at. It's talking about finances. We ought to be generous with our finances. I I, I think there. I just I'm, people can say what they want about being a good steward. I, I think one of the worst testimonies a Christian can have is being a tightwad. I, I do. I, I just think that, or or someone who is constantly uh, begging and poor mouthing and saying they don't have anything and and, and seeking everybody else to give them something. I, I've seen I've seen people in the ministry doing that. I've watched people in the congregation do that. And and it just disgusts me that that you you are saying that God just isn't big enough to meet your needs, and so you're always constantly begging, and asking other people. And <clears throat> I'm not saying that you hide things that, in your pride. That look, sometimes you know somebody just needs a helping hand, but there's a lot of times they get a helping hand, and then they start thinking that hey, I like this hand, and it makes life a whole lot easier, and so. They just keep asking for handouts, and that's not at all. <clears throat> so you, I, you always got <clears throat> to clarify everything. But this is what he says in Second Corinthians chapter nine. But this I say: He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly. Or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. <clears throat> and so Paul was seeking to, to get a uh, uh, an offering up for the believers at Jerusalem. They were really catching it there. I mean, they had lost they had lost their homes, they lost their jobs, they had lost many family members, been disowned by others around them. I mean, they had they they had nothing. Okay, and so they were giving an offering to take to them and. And here he's telling the Corinthians, look, guys, you're, you're blessed right now. God is giving you greatly here. And so uh, you want to reap sparing. You, if you give, you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. But I'm telling you that don't do that. And God will bless you. And, and, uh, and he says this, now he that ministereth seed to the sower, that's God, okay, gives you seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, He'll also give you food and bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase increase the fruits of your righteousness. These are things God will do if we're generous with what we have. Being enriched, everything to all bountifulness, which causeth uh, through us thanksgiving to God. Well, people are thankful when we're, we're generous with what we have. For the administration of this service not only supplieth the one of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. That they are thankful for you 
forgiving and meeting a need, and, and they thank God for that, whilst by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. And so be liberal, you know, be, be generous with what you have. And by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. <laughs> uh, you, you know what? People don't like to hear that. Matter of fact, I just watched about a dozen uh, fall off of here uh, and and shut it off. And, and say what you want. You can walk around and you can be a tight quarry with everything you have. And, and you can tell yourself that you're just being a good steward of what God's given you. And all you're doing is sitting on it and like a chicken on a nest. And, and you're just uh, sitting there thinking that that's going to give you security and the snake's going to come up and get it. And so, anyway, <clears throat> be generous with what you have, and you'll find God to bless you. And, and, and no, he may not give you your money back. Don't, don't, don't go in down the Pentecostal ideas, give it all away, and then you'll become rich. The only ones that get rich on that are the ones talking you into giving it away. And so, but God will bless you when you have a, when you purpose in your heart to do something and then God blesses you with that and, and gives you the ability to give and, and blesses you beyond your imagination with eternal blessings that you'd never have otherwise. Just give of what you have. Be generous with what you have. And so let's get out there. Let's tell people about Jesus and let's live in a way that you're not angry, but you're generous with what you have and whenever you need to, you go back to God for his restoration and gives you a joy in how you live. So God bless you guys. Let's have a great day today. Um, pray for our safety as we're gone. And uh, Lord willing, in a uh, week or week and a half, I'll be back on here. God bless.